Well, welcome to Camp Hope AME Church, located at 114 Camp Hope Church Road, Macon, Georgia, 31211. We are back another Wednesday to study to show ourselves approval. Workmen need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Well, today we're going to be talking about Numbers 9. So get your um, Bibles out and turn to Numbers chapter 9. Amen. Get your swords either your physical Bible, your digital Bible, whatever, but have that before us as we get ready to go through our Bible study on this Wednesday. But of course, before we go to Bible study, we have to pray, amen, and ask God to allow the Holy Spirit to come and teach us. So let us pray. God, we just thank you. We praise you for another Wednesday. We thank you for allowing us to be able to come and study, show us self-approval, Workmen need not be ashamed. Lord, let us be a light. Let us be a testimony. Let the Holy Spirit come and teach. Let the Holy Spirit come and reveal. Let the Holy Spirit come and give us all that we need that we might have a spirit of excellence as we are here in this earth, but not of this earth, representing you as a voice from you, as wisdom and understanding from you in the name of Jesus, Lord. And if we've done anything in thought, word, and deed, that would hinder the Holy Spirit to guide us, to hinder the Holy Spirit to teach us, to lift us up, to give us all that we need. We ask you to forgive us right now. Cover us in the blood of Jesus. This is our prayer we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and thank God. Again, welcome, 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 all of you out there in the telephonic line, line amen, and also out here in the virtual world. But let's get right into our scripture today. Remember Numbers chapter 9. Numbers chapter 9. Let us read. The Lord spoke to Moses in the desert of Sinai in the first month of the second year after they came out of Egypt. He said, have the Israelites celebrate the Passover at the appointed time. Celebrate it at the appointed time at twilight on the 14th day of the month in accordance with all its rules and regulations. So Moses told the Israelites to celebrate the Passover, and they did so in the desert of Sinai at twilight on the 14th day on the first month. The Israelites did everything just as the Lord commanded Moses. But some of them could not celebrate the Passover on that day because they were ceremonially unclean on account of a dead body. So they came to Moses and Aaron that same day and said to Moses, we have become unclean because of a dead body, but why should we be kept from presenting the Lord's offering with the other Israelites at the appointed time? Moses answered them, wait until I find out what the Lord commands concerning you. Then the Lord said to Moses, tell the Israelites, when any of you or your descendants are unclean because of dead bodies or away on a journey, they are still to celebrate the Lord's Passover, but they are to do it on the 14th day of the second month at twilight. They are to eat the lamb together with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. They must not leave any of it till morning or break any of its bones. When they celebrate the Passover, they must follow all the regulations. But if anyone who is ceremony clean and not on a journey fail to celebrate the Passover, they must be cut off from their people for not presenting the Lord's offering at the appointed time. They will bear the consequences of their sins. A foreigner residing among you is also to celebrate the Passover in accordance with its rules and regulations. You must have the same regulation for both the foreigner and the native born. On the day the tabernacle, the tent of the covenant law was set up, the cloud covered it from evening to morning. The cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Wherever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. 
As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only for evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped. At the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. I've read for you Numbers chapter 9, verses 1 to 23, the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. All right, we're talking about beginning, keeping the Passover. Now, Israel felt, celebrated their first Passover as they left Egypt, All right? You can find that in the Exodus chapter 12. Now, one year later, the first month of the second year, God commands Israel to keep the Passover a second time. It was not a surprise for Israel to hear that the Passover must be kept every year. When Passover was first initiated, God told Israel they would, were to keep it throughout their generations. And you can find that in Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. Now, the tabernacle at this point was finished on the first day of the first month of the second year. On this day, the cloud of the glory covered the tabernacle. At this time, the tribal uh, leaders brought their gifts. And, and if we read in verse 7, uh, and the priests were consecrated in accordance with Luke chapter 8. So now everything was set up. Everything was ready to go. Everything. The long stay at the base of Mount Sinai was not a time of inactivity or, or indulgence. It was a time of great activity. It was in celebration of the goodness and mercy of the Lord and in preparation for what was expected and have been uh, soon to the triumph of March when they go into the promised land. And we know that as the land of Canaan. Now, everything that they did was according to God's instructions. Uh, Passover reminded Israel of when God passed over his people when the, Israel, when the Egyptians first uh, born were judged in the last plague upon the Egyptians. The blood of the lamb applied to the door of the or post of the home was seen by the angel of death. Uh, the angel of God came and judged and seeing the blood, the angel passed over and spared that home covered by the blood of the lamb. Passover was kept as a continual remembrance of this occasion of judgment Passover and of the deliverance from slavery that followed. Because remember, uh, Pharaoh kept going back and forth, kept going back and forth, and people would say, yeah, God hardened his heart, but God was proving himself not just to uh, the Egyptians, but also to the Israelites, the Hebrew people himself. So after this last thing, Pharaoh said, get them out of here, let them go, all right? The same way in our time, in our point, Jesus fulfilled the Passover sacrifice by his death on the cross. Uh, the covering of his blood caused the judgment of God to do what? Pass over us. We are commanded to what? To continue. Jesus says, remember Remember our occasion of being separated from judgment and deliverance that followed by remembering Jesus' work on the cross through what? Our Lord's Supper. Jesus tells us what? To do this as often as we would do it, did what? In remembrance of what he did for us. That's why we take communion. That's why we do it monthly in remembrance. Some uh, do it daily. Some do it every Sunday. But Jesus says, as often as you would remember what Jesus did for us. All right. And that covered 
verses 1 through uh, 6. Amen. And now uh, we're going to go from 6 through, I believe, 14. Amen. Forgot to turn my phone off. Amen. <laughs> I do apologize for that. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, but uh, 16 through 14, in the case of unclean men, what we have found here now, it, the time has come and they have been defiled of a dead body of a corpse. And it goes on and says, there were certain men who were defiled by a human corpse. So they that they could not keep the Passover. This was an attempt to resolve now what was going on because they would say, why should we miss this Passover? You know, so there were two principles. The first principle was every Israelites must be what included in the Passover, must. The second principle was that no one in a state of ritual uncleanness could take part in the normal religious life of the community. The outward, external symbol of uncleanness was important and could not be ignored. These outward signs of uncleanliness reminded Israel of their inward uncleanliness. The best way to think of this notion of uncleanliness is as a teaching device to remind the people of Israel of the holiness of God. Now, these certain men, these men wanted to keep the Passover and were bold enough to say, hey, Moses, we should be not, uh, we should be able to do this. You know, there should be an exemption for this command because it's not our fault that this has happened. And what did Moses do? Moses said, well, let me, instead of Moses making a decision, he said, let me go to God and talk about this and, and see what it is that, that we should do here. So Moses needed God's wisdom to resolve these principles. It wasn't good to exclude people from keeping the Passover. It also wasn't good to disrespect God's holiness by allowing ceremonial uncleanness to, be, to, to participate. To this point, God had not spoken on this issue, and therefore Moses needed to seek God to find out what it is that God wanted uh, him to do in this particular situation. Now, what did God say? God told Moses that those unclean at Passover could still keep the Passover, but they must do it a month later, not at the same time. This solution made keeping of the Passover possible, yet it respected God's holiness and the principles of the ritual purity. See, God said, this is how we do it. God said, this is how we done in this alternate particular ceremony, amen. So we respected God and they did keep the uh, command that God said to do. And, it's, and, and, and it says, but the man were who is unclean, who is unclean, right? But now God goes after this and say, now those that are clean and not on a journey and can do this. Those among the Israelites who were clean and not traveling must, that's what God said, must keep the Passover. They have no excuse. I've told them to do it. This is when they do it. It must be done. If not, they will be cut off from among their people. The punishment for not keeping the Passover was, was severe. That men shall bear his sins instead of having their sins born by the Passover lamb. So it was a serious thing. Then God says, not only with the people, but the strangers that dwelled among you. It didn't matter what bloodline or ethnic group the person came from, even the strangers among the Israel, uh, among Israel could and must keep the Passover, or they would be cut off. A Jew with the purest bloodness would be cut off if they if they neglected the Passover, and also, of course, a Gentile stranger would be accepted if they kept the Passover. So God is sustaining for all. The Gentile visitor had to come under the law of the God of, the God of Israel. Those from outside of Israel could keep Passover if they were first 
circumcised. So they had to be circumcised as a sign that they belong to the Lord, right? So remember that. Uh, it says that uh, he must do so according to the right of the Passover and according to uh, its ceremonies. So the second Passover, when uh, in that second month on that 14th day, I believe it was, they had to keep the Passover in accordance to the same right that they did it that first month and ceremony as a normal feast. The meal and the ritual had to be exactly the same, all right? Now in verse 15, it talks about the movement of the nation. Talked about what was the signs and the symbols and how they knew how to move and how they knew when to encamp, all right? It says, now in the day that the tabernacle was raised up, when the, when the tabernacle originally was built, God blessed it by showing God's presence in the form of a cloud by day and a fire by night. We find that in Exodus chapter 40. I believe it's around uh, verses 34 through 38. This cloud of God's Shekinah glory was evidence at different times in, in the uh, Israelite history, as we'll see. We're going to see it in 1 Kings. We're going to see it in... in, 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 in uh, in uh, in um, Ecclesiastes, not Ecclesiastes, in uh, uh, in um, Ezekiel, uh, we see it in First Kings when uh, Solomon built the temple. God's present covered it, and uh, in Ezekiel we saw it uh, when Israel had completely turned away from God, and before the temple was destroyed by the Babylons. So we're going to see God's Shekinah glory. God's presence as we go through. But it says that God's presence was from evening until morning, and it was above the tabernacle like the appearance of fire. These signs were more than just visible assurance of God's presence. The cloud by day and the cloud and the fire by night was also helped to comfort the Israelites to let them know God was there. The fire of night was a comfort to Israel amid the darkness of the wilderness. And the cloud by day was a shade from the hot wilderness sun. So there were purposes as, as far as also for this cloud and by day and this cloud by night. It also guided, they were guided by the cloud by day and by night in the movement. Since though Israelites had been organized and ordered by God, though they had been cleansed, set apart, blessed, giving, and, and, and walking in their priesthood, they still had to be guided by God each step of the way to make it to the promised land, which was located in Canaan. God did not do all these previous things to make them able to march towards the promised land without God but to make every step in constant dependence on God. We should always lean and depend on God, regardless of whether we're blessed totally, or whether we're struggling, or whether we're going through, or whether we have the strength or not, whatever situation and circumstances, we should always look to God first for God's guidance and God's leadership. It tells us when the whenever the cloud was taken up from above the temple after the children of Israel, they would journey. All right, they would move. Israel moved when the clouds uh, uh, would lift. They stayed when the, when the cloud stayed. <clears throat> they only went where the presence of God led them, led them, and they only stayed where the presence of God stayed, following God the whole way. Hallelujah. It just reminds me of the scripture that says, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and God will what? Direct your path. It also reminds me of the scripture that says, seek first the kingdom of God and God's righteousness and all that other stuff will be added upon us. We must always seek God's guidance follow God's will, follow God's way. And I tell you, on the other end, it will be all right. 
And it goes on and says, it didn't matter how long this cloud stayed, whether it was two days or whether it's a month or a year, the movement of the cloud was, was unpredictable. God would not allow Israelite to be led by routine or by tradition. They had to see and respond to the presence of God. You hear that? Don't fall in a routine. Don't do it. Let your relationship be God would be unique. Wait on the Lord. Don't rush. God moves when God want to move. God speaks when God want to speak. Amen. You'll get in a habit and God's not not even asking you to do such a thing. God will move. God will guide. God will lead us along the way. But again, continue to do what? Seek first. The orders of a good person, the steps of a good person is what? Ordered by what? The Lord. All right. At the command of the Lord, they encamped. And at the command of the Lord, they set out. No responsibility rested on the people save that they be obedient unto God. They were not called on to consider the time or direction of their march, but it was equally true that they were not permitted to, to object or delay, all of which served to keep the fact of the sovereign authority of Jehovah. Amen. God was leading. Yahweh was leading. God chose to keep this people so dependent upon God and so submissive to the decision of, of his own will that he would not even give them regular times of marching or resting. They were to do both when and where God saw best. Because God knows what's best for us. God knows what we can handle. God knows everything about us. Amen. So follow God. Follow God. I'd ask you to read over this chapter again. Amen. It's Numbers chapter nine. Amen. If you have any questions, let us know. Put us in the private chat. Send us a letter. Amen. Send us an email. Amen. And we will get back with you. It has been a pleasure to come on this Wednesday to study to show our self-approval. Work but need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And what do we say here at Camp Hope? We say, come grow with us as we, what? Transform our thoughts, our words, and our deeds as we prepare for Christ's return. Look out for first Sunday's coming, amen. God has a message, amen, for us on that first Sunday. We'll be remembering what Jesus said, communion Sunday, amen, for bread and for wine, amen. So make sure you be tuned in on that Sunday and hear what thus says the Lord. Know that we love you with the love of Christ. Amen. See you next time.